Hello and welcome to Hibs TV ahead of today's cinch premiership match against Aberdeen. Our penultimate home game of the season. Nick Montgomery will be looking to send home the supporters happy in the Edinburgh sunshine this afternoon. So we're not close or not too far away from kickoff now, but I'm delighted to be joined by a man that is a Hibs favourite and the Scottish Cup winner in 2016. Before we catch up with Liam Fontaine, let's just take a look at that glorious day. And lost! <laughs> Hibs have won the Scottish Cup! It is glory, glory to the high bees! 2016 Scottish Cup winners! Fonts, it's great to have you here. Um, firstly, how are you doing? I'm good and uh, thanks for having me back. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, I said to you as we walked out of the tunnel, um, it's a long time since I've, I've done that and it's a great feeling and you'll never get, I, well, I'll never get tired of walking out and looking out across this pitch and, and great, a great venue that it is. Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously the intro and you get to, to look back at the, the Scottish Cup winning day as well. That obviously probably the highlight of your career. Uh, yeah, it's definitely up there. It's probably the biggest, um, as in the what it was and the achievement and obviously what it meant to this club. And uh, obviously, I get asked about it all the time if ever I bump into anyone associated with Hibs. And to be fair, anyone, sorry, anyone that's a football fan, and I think anyone that's a real football fan knows what that what that day was and what it meant to this club. And um, you know, I was lucky enough to be part of that squad that did it and um, and that time at this club and it, it was an amazing achievement for us all. Yeah, how much did you enjoy enjoy your time here? I loved it and it's, it's no secret. Um, I'm, a, I'm a massive, massive fan of the club. Um, when I arrived here, I bought into it and I think that's the biggest thing to be successful at this club, especially I think the players need to, when you, when you play here, you have to buy into what this club is and you, you buy into the fans and you play for the badge and that's what you're here for to play. You're not here to play for anything else other than the badge. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we were looking back at that 2016 Scottish Cup final and two of the guys that you played with on that day, Paul Hanlon and Lewis Stevenson, it's been announced this week that, that they'll both leave the club at mm -hmm. the end of the season. Um, just firstly for you, what, what were those guys like for, for you to play with and, and to be in the dressing room with? They're amazing. They're amazing guys. Um, anyone that knows them personally will tell you that they're just straight, straight guys. They love it. Their their work, their work rate for the club, their love for the clubs. There, I mean, all you've got to do is look at the appearances they've made together, um, the achievements that they've done together. Uh, Louis obviously won. Is he won? He's, he's the won Scottish the, the Scottish Cup. Cup he's, yeah. he's won. Only player in history. The only, exactly, the only player that's done that. Uh, the appearances that they've racked up. I mean, being in the dressing room with them, you can you can see they're they're so dedicated to looking after themselves being the best versions of themselves at all times. And they're great examples to the academy boys coming through and the young lads that are getting chances to come through. Uh, all you've got to do is look at Louis and Paul. And you know you just have to take your hat off to them to obviously play that long for one club is a, it's a massive achievement. And you don't see it these days in football. And um, you know there always comes a time when they have to, you do have to sort of move on. And you know that time's now. And I'm sure they'll both go on and play carry on playing because they like I said they look after themselves but you know they'll they'll be loved forever by this club and that's that's not going to change just because they leave and um, you know I think if you know them personally like I do and you shared the things that we shared you know it's they're just they're just like I can't I can't speak high enough of them I sort of spoke about it before when we whenever we've done sort of whenever they did their testimonial and that I think it's just they're just really really good people and there is, they're just prime examples of what I said about you play for the club and that's it. Yeah, and obviously Paul Hanlon's, I think he's the fifth um, all-time appearance holder for mm -hmm. Hibs, came through the academy, um, obviously he's club captain as mm -hmm. well at the moment. What, what was he like as a person? 
really nice guy. Like obviously when you when you first when you first turn up and stuff like that and you meet new new squads and new players, um, Paul was one straight away that sort of welcomed me and 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 obviously I came in as, as a defender, as a left foot left, left foot defender. And obviously when you first yeah. turn up at a club and you you're you're an existing player and you go, Oh my god, there's a player that's in my position. But it weren't like that to be fair. It was um he just, you know, he was really good to play with. We had some good times. I mean, we, I think our back five that day in the Scottish Cup and, and in my time here, we used to play a lot of back three work and it would always be me, Paul and, me, Paul and Daz. And then obviously Louis one side, Dave the other side. And, you know, I think when you are building teams and building units, you, you do have a bond and we've, we'll have that bond forever. And he's a good, he's a very good leader. Like. Mm if you know him uh, obviously there's all different types of leaders there's there's vocal leaders there's leaders who just get out there and, and show show it on the pitch and he's a very he's very um, he leads by example yeah. uh, and that's off the pitch obviously you see the stuff on the pitch but the stuff you don't see in the training ground the way he'll treat people the way he'll help people um, he's, a, he's a he's a good good guy and you know he is and like I, I'll you you You'll always hear me say that these are good guys, and because there's, there are good guys, but we're, and there's not so good guys, and these guys are good guys. Yeah, absolutely. Lewis Stevenson is the epitome as well of a, mm. a, a really good guy. He's obviously the, made the most appearances for the, for the club in terms of mm -hmm. league football, fourth in the all-time appearance charts. Yeah. I, I mean, he's, he's had an absolutely fantastic Hibs career, hasn't he? He has, yeah. Um, Louis, yeah. Louis has, you know, uh, he has that reputation as just being Mr. Hibbs, um, yep. nicest guy you'll probably ever meet in football. But I tell you one thing about Louis: once, as soon as he crosses the white line, <laughs> he will kick you. He'll kick your grand. He'll kick anyone he has to to win, and he'll do it for the club. Um, very, very quiet guy off the pitch. Yeah, stuff quite like unassuming, that. isn't very it? Very quiet. Um, but when you're on the pitch, he's very aggressive very committed and he's a player you'd love to have playing for you yep. and you know like I said it's you know once age comes up on you sometimes you just you do have to move on and like I said but they're both they're both going to leave with their legendary status and and it'll be forever etched in the history of the club yeah it's absolutely what what they both deserve obviously Louis is one appearance off being making 600 for, yeah. for Hibs again. <laughs> if, what, yeah. what an absolute fantastic yeah, yeah. landmark that is. It, it, listen, I hope, he, I hope he gets it because I think it would be right. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're judged by your numbers mm. of appearances, but it would just be nice for him to just add another little something to, to his already amazing um, resume. So, yeah. you know, like I said, I think he'll get that. I hope he gets it. And then I... I think he'll go on to play more more games anyway. So he's a, if you know him, he looks after himself. He's a he's a machine. He's a machine in the gym. He's, he looks after his body, and I'm sure he's still got that hunger to play, even though it won't be for him after the season. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're just going to go to a quick break now, but make sure you stay with us because we'll continue to to look ahead to today's game against Aberdeen. We'll see you shortly.
Simplexity Travel is made up of some of London's leading bespoke travel managers. Simplexity specialise in luxury travel services for corporate and private clients, groups and individuals who lead busy lives. Simplexity will simplify challenging schedules and complex trip itineraries, ensuring our clients always travel with complete peace of mind and a perfect luxury. Simplexity Travel, making luxury travel simple. Hello and welcome back to Easter Road. Fonts, we'll, we'll continue to build up to today's game mm -hmm. against Aberdeen then. Um, this year for Hibs has been a, a difficult season, to, to be completely honest. Uh, what, what's, what's your take been on this year? Um, I mean, I think, you know, obviously when you're at this club, uh, there's a, there is an expectation. Um, and, you know, for whatever reason, obviously, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have opinions on why this year's maybe not been as successful and, you know, obviously not getting into the top six and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, everyone's got an opinion and, and a reason for it. And sometimes you just, you can't put a, thing, you can't put a finger on the exact reason. Um, I'm sure everyone's trying to put in their, their, you know, trying their hardest every single week. Mm. I, don't, I don't know, I've never been in a dressing room where a team will go out and be like, oh, we're not yeah. doing, we're not trying to do you know what I mean? So everyone's trying, right? And for whatever reason, it's not worked. Mm -hmm. So obviously, then you then get questioned and it's like, and then you have to be able to handle the questioning and then you have to try and put things right. And the only way you can do that, from my experience, is, is to keep turning up, keep turning up, keep grafting, keep putting the work in. And at some point, it will turn. Obviously, like I said, the success, this season it's not there and you get judged on it mm -hmm. especially with being in the city and you're expected to be the head team right and that that will that but the good thing is this season to finish it off you get a chance to go away and reassess you get a chance to the players go away reassess themselves because you know you can point you can point fingers and you can be it could be is it manager is it this is it that but at the end of the day, right, as a player, first and foremost, you've always got to look in. You're always looking first, and that's the biggest thing. Um, have you done enough? Are you doing extra? Mm -hmm. Are you doing something to change it? And you just that's what the summer will allow people to do. Go away, check out, are they, they need to check their stats. Are they moving? Are they fit enough? Yeah. Because at this level, and to be at the top, you have to be the top of your game every single week. And you know, this is a great club, and you've got a lot of um, you've got a lot of access to a lot of help to so use it. That was a big thing when I when I when I came up here. I was impressed with the the facilities and what you actually had access to. And at the time, it wasn't getting used. And we that squad with when Alan Stubbs came in, um, we set a, we set a benchmark and we set a, it was a, it was levels, and we set standards. And we didn't fall below them standards. And we had a team of, you know, everyone that would want, wanted to go above and beyond mm -hmm. and, and were hungry. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see out the season, come back, and, and it's just a case of coming back next year and, and really going for it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we do come into this game off the back of a defeat against Ross County. We'll just take a quick look back at that one. 
Lewis Miller picked up an injury yeah, early on and he, right. had, he had to come on as a substitute and uh, got a lot more minutes. Yeah. I think they, they bargained to put in him that night. But, uh, boy, it's the ball into the area. Chance there. Chance. It's, oh, it's, it's off the post. Yes. It's in the net now, though. The flag's up for offside. Or is it? I don't think it is, Cliff. Ball was played in by Mark Boyle. I think it was Rocky that got the shot. Yeah, Rocky shot came back off the base of the post. And Nizian was there. For no, he's not ah, offside. No question the ball of offside there. County defenders on mass claiming towards the assistant referee. Rocky's effort came back off the post and Mizian. Yeah. Hibbs, however. Here reasonably well organised as Dandy plays the ball into the Hibs penalty area. What he does well to help the penalty area. that one into the back of the net with his right foot. Rocky was under a little bit of pressure with the ball into the box. He got the head on it, but just didn't get enough on it, Kevin, to clear it to the edge of the area. It dropped around the penalty spot. And Simon Murray absolutely rifles it home to then count the back level. I have no idea what Rocky's doing there, Cliff. Absolutely no idea. And, you know, I think you're giving him the benefit of the doubt. So can have a look at it from the replay here. Simon Murray is, is in behind him. There are times when we should be doing that, that we play the ball yeah. short at the edge of the area and exactly. get it away. Exactly. I'm, I'm not against this play. Like that. I see again, that's a chance here for County. Harman driving forward into the area. Jordan White, can he set it off? He can. Ross County have the lead. And once again, that is just criminal defending. There's no other word for it. I'm all for this passing the ball out from the back. But there's a time and a place for it, and that wasn't it. I've said since minute one, but about Jojo Wallacott and the way that he's passed the ball out. He's looked so nervous. You know, he's not he's not looked comfortable he's not looked comfortable the whole game. And that resonates out with the other players. And you know there's nothing that you can say about that. Yeah, that was a really frustrating day, wasn't it? In in Dingwall. I mean, we just looked back to the at the highlights mm -hmm. then. We created a lot of chances, but ultimately again two mistakes cost us yeah uh, I mean I've had a I've had a long career and I've been I've been involved in um, I've been involved in a lot of uh, a lot of teams a lot of seasons um, so I've, I've, I've gone through spells like that you can um, we were just talking then and like you can go through some games where you can be playing the, the best game of your, of your life right and then you like you can you can bombard a goal with loads of attempts and it's not going in and then all of a sudden they get it's one slip or they hit a shot and it goes in and then I mean I've, I've played at Dingwall as a home player so I used to mm -hmm. be at Ross County so Dingwall is a hard place to go yeah right as much as people think Ross County is a small club and all that sort of stuff it's it's a great little venue to go play at the pitch is usually decent and they try and they're tryers up there mm -hmm. real tries right and you know like I said sometimes it's just, it just happens where you can dominate, have a shot on goal, shot goes in, and it's one of those moments where if you've had a season like that and you get a little done again, you're like, oh no, not again. Yeah. And then you have that, and you see that little bit of like doubt creep in, and then it can, and then obviously you get another, another mistake and, and another goal, and it's like, but like it kind of comes down to. Like I said, when people are, if there is mistakes or you've, you've experienced like stuff like that throughout the season and it happens and you're like, mm, oh no, it's happened again. <laughs> no, but yeah, do you know what I mean? You're like, yeah, yeah. it's happened again. And it's that thingy. Whereas if you can, if you make a mistake, I was sort of going through my career. I've made mistakes. I made a mistake in a final, right? In the League Cup final, I made a mistake. Um, but what you've got to do is after you made a mistake, you have to try and find a way to, for the next four, five, six games, get consistent again. Don't make mistakes. I know it's easy to say don't make a mistake, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you've got to try and do just all your basic stuff, do it right, do it properly. Yeah. And then as you build up again, your confidence comes back up, you, you'll, and then you'll just see that little change and it'll, and it'll bleed into the other people around you. And, that, and that's all you've got to do. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's like disappointing to go up to people expect, like I said, you to win when you go ding or when you, especially in this the bottom six now, 
you should be expected to win every single game. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the week before we went up to St Johnston and, and came out with a 3-1 victory there. We'll just take a quick look back at that one as well. With Emiliano fancies it or not? Yeah, both Emiliano and, and Newell over the ball. Newell obviously with his fantastic left foot or Emiliano with the right. We've got a couple of options here. Emiliano, oh, well, what a finish that is. Well, I just said if Emiliano fancies it, why not? And he sticks that one right in the top left-hand corner as we look at it. In the meet of the St Johnson keeper beating all ends up. Six minutes on the clock, St Johnson nil Hibs one. That's some free kick. Sidibe's been left up top for St Johnson. Newell launches the ball into the box. Hanlon gets a flick on. Doesn't sit kindly for it. Does the second time though. And it's Paul Hanlon that gives Hibs a two-goal lead just before half-time. St Johnson can't get the ball clear inside their own penalty area. Paul Hanlon had a go at it. It was blocked by a defender, but it landed kindly for him. It looked to me as though that was his right foot that he stroked that one into the back of the net with. We'll see it better here. It was indeed, yep. Yeah. Well, Paul Hanlon gave Hibbs the insurance of a second goal just before half time. Phillips nodded forward again. Chance here for Hibbs. Hill and Venti, and that makes it three. And that will be a huge boost for Dylan Venti coming back from injury. Joel, give him a chance like that, and he's not going to miss from there. No, he's not. It was a fantastic finish from from Venti. Um, had quite a lot of time to to think about what he wanted to do, but. The, the outcome was never in doubt and fantastic to see the, the double substitution, Josh Campbell winning the header, playing it forward, Venti playing in between the, the centre halves and, and putting it into the back of the net. Stevie May driving forward, gets the shot away blocked by Paul Hanlon. McPherson plays it out again now for Dre Wright. There's Carey outside him. Here he clips the ball into the Hibs area. It's missed by everyone. Cut back. St Johnson have won. <laughs> Turned into the net. Hit by Stevie May. And Hibs couldn't get the ball clear. So, in the final minute of the 90, St Johnson get one back. Four, three. Yeah, well, that was an excellent performance in Perth and signs of, of what we can do when things do go well for us. And obviously we, we kind of cut out those those little errors. I suppose that is the, the positives and the momentum that we want to bring into, into the summer. Yeah, it was a good performance up there. Um, some great goals. Um, and, and like I said, it's on the flip side to what we were talking about at Ross County, uh, that game was probably an example of, of when it goes well. Mm -hmm. A great performance. Um, I was buzzing for Paul to get get on and get and get a goal. Yeah. Uh, just for him, uh, we used to. I mean, obviously playing with him, we always used to always used to joke about goals and how we how we should score more goals and as defenders. Um, so even though I'm away from the club and I still love it when I see people that I've played with and had these sort of conversations get goals and you know I don't think. Um, I mean, obviously, Dave was the second, when I think when Dave signed for Hibs, I don't think he even scored a goal, mm. and then he became a goal machine for <laughs> Hibs. So um, I, it's, a, it's a great thing, and, uh, and like I said, that performance up there was is a, probably an example, and it's probably the, the frustrating bit for for fans and, and and watchers that well they can do this, so why can't we do this every single week, right? And that's the um, that's the magic, isn't it? The magic yeah. question about if, it, if everyone could do that every single week, we'll all be the. the winners of everything in the world Absolutely. Wouldn't we? so that's the um like i said it's there yeah you can i mean about taking momentum into the into the summer um i'm not sure how much of that is sort of relevant because obviously mm -hmm. you get such a, a break yeah and obviously you don't know what's going to happen with the rebuild and, and stuff like that but like i said you can see the quality there there's some really good players here really really good players and it's just fitting that you know that 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 jigsaw together the right way so that you know and finding that consistency like that's what it's all about how to to bang out those those kind of performances what made that performance 
what it was. What did it feel like? Can you remember that feeling? Can you instill that feeling in yourself firstly as a player? And then can you then bleed it into your, your teammates around you? And drag people through. Sometimes you have to drag people through. Yeah, yeah. If you're in good form, right? And you might think so-and-so is having a hard time in the team. How do you get that? How do you get the best out of him? You drag him through. And that's where you need those leaders, those experienced ones to drag those players through. Tell them they're going to be fine. Tell them I've got your back. That's the sign of a good teammate. And I think that's what, when you're in a successful team, that's what happens. Every single person drags the other one through. And then when I'm, if, I, if I'm in a good place and I'm dragging someone through, and then in a couple of weeks time, if I'm having a bit of a bad time, I expect that person to drag me through. And that's, yeah, that's, that's what happens when, you, when you're in a successful dressing room. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm sure there'll be players that will be doing that. One of those is Chris Cadden. We caught up with him and our head coach, Nick Montgomery, just to preview today's game. Cads, we're looking ahead to this weekend, Aberdeen on Sunday, first of three games in the space of seven days. How important is it that we kind of end the season on a high? Yeah, the gaffer sort of um, told us that, obviously, we, we know ourselves, but it's a big week for us. We, there's three games to go last week of the season. We want to end on a high. We want to go into next season and sort of and, and sort of keep on going from there. So, listen, we know how big these games are and it starts from Sunday. Yeah, what do we need to do to make sure we get a positive result against Aberdeen? Yeah, I think sort of start on the front foot. I think um, so. I sort of take the game to them. I think um, listen, it'll be tough. They are building a good side with, with some good players. Uh, we know that, so we're going to be prepared for that. But play our style, play our game, um, the way we know we can play and get our, our dangerous players on the ball and and go for there. Just personally, how much have have you kind of got out of the second half of the season coming back from injury and? Getting back into the swing of things, I think you started at the, the last six games. Yeah, no, I've absolutely loved it. I'm um, just gutted the season's sort of finishing now. We've only got sort of just over a week left. I feel like I'm just just sort of getting started. But yeah, I've absolutely loved it. Loved coming back. Loved them um, playing for Abs again. It was a it was a long time and something that I, I really really missed doing and miss miss playing miss playing football. So I'm sort of cherishing every minute and yeah, just try to play as many games as possible before the end of the season. Nice one, cards. Appreciate Cheers, your time. Guys. Nick, first of all, the news went out earlier this week about Paul and Lewis Stevenson who will leave the club at the end of the season. How would you kind of sum up their contribution in your time working with them? Well, my time working with them has been, been a pleasure. You know, two ultimate professionals, uh, great, great club men. And I think yeah, what they've done for the club, the commitment they've shown, the dedication, the sacrifice that they've made for Hibs, I think everybody appreciates that. Um, but yeah, moving forward, you know, obviously wish them really well moving forward in, in the next stage of their, their careers um, and their life. But, you know, as it's been said this week, they're always uh, welcome at the club. Um, the, you know, the, the Gordon family have expressed expressed that to, to them as well. And yeah, we uh, yeah we'll hopefully finish off the season well and, and give them a good send off. Yeah, looking ahead then to Sunday Aberdeen at, at home back at Easter Road for the first time in about a month. How have preparations been going for that one? Yeah, we've been away from home the last couple of games. Um, you know, coming back to Easter Road will, will be nice, and and preparation's been good. We've worked really hard this week. And, and yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a, a tough game. Aberdeen are a good side, obviously not where they want to be, similar to us. But it's an opportunity for for both teams to and, and to finish the season strong. And we've got three games to go, so yeah, it's really nice to be back at Easter Road and hopefully we can get a good crowd come and get behind the behind the boys and and, and push us on to the end of the season. Yeah, you mentioned three games to go. How important is it is these last three games to to kind of build some momentum going into next season? Yeah, it's really important. Obviously, uh, you know the, the St. Johnson game. You know, people question the character and you know the attitude going into the game, and I thought we, we responded really well. Um, and then uh, Ross County again is a, a performance that uh, I feel should have uh, should have resulted in in three points, and, and unfortunately um, yeah, we didn't take our chances like we did at St. Johnson, and we got punished by by making mistakes that ultimately cost us goals. So yeah, that that was really frustrating. Um, it was a long long trip back, but it's been a real good good week of training. Um, and we're really looking forward to the next week. So, you know, three games in a week, and it'll be a good opportunity to, to rotate the squad as well. And, and again, everybody's uh, everybody's uh, fit and available. Bar, I think Lewis Miller, um, uh, Ellie Yawan, um, and I think yeah, I think that's probably about it. And Jake Dahl Hayes is back into training. Luke Amos is back into training, and David Marshall's back into training as well. So, um, yeah, the squad's looking healthy going into the game. Yeah, I was going to ask about about team use. Marshall obviously missed the game at the weekend. So, so did Fish. Are we likely to see them involved again on on Sunday? Yeah, David Marshall will be involved. Will Fish is possibly a doubt. Um, but other than that, like I said, everyone's uh, everyone's been back in 
training this week and with three games to, to go next week, we're going to need everybody. You mentioned Jake Dill, he's been back, back training and back on the grass. How much of a, a boost would that be for him to be back on the pitch? I look, for him personally, it'll be a big boost. It's been really, really frustrating time. You know, since I joined the club, he's he's not been available to play, and yeah, he's he's a very good player. I think everyone knows what Jake can bring to the team, but it's been a real difficult time for him, um, and he's needed the, the boys and everybody at HTC to to to, to keep uh, giving him confidence that you know he can get back before the end of the season. So it's great to see him back in the training with the boys, and you can see the quality he's got. And yeah, we're, we're really hoping that we can get him some minutes before the end of the season, and and, and so he can tick that box going into the off season. And the reality is he'll be like a, a new player being signed at the club at the start of next year. So really looking forward to hopefully seeing Jake out there uh, with a hip shirt on, and I'm sure the fans would appreciate that as well. Nice one, Nick. Appreciate your time. Cheers. Well, Fonts, we heard from Chris Cadden and Nick Montgomery just then. What, what do you expect from today's game? Aberdeen are obviously in good form as well. I uh, just expect, obviously, I think it's, it's two big teams. Um, so, obviously, there's going to be that little bit of we want to prove we're the, we're the bigger team or we're the better team. Uh, I think it'll be, we're expecting some good football. Mm -hmm. It'll be nice to, obviously, it's a great day for it. There's no wind. I've been here many a time and it's been <laughs> yeah. blowing a gale. <laughs> So the, the conditions are perfect. Uh, I, I expect like to see some, some, some good football. I expect to see some fast paced mm -hmm. stuff um, because you know, it's, it's two good teams. And you know, you, you, you're gonna wanna f try and finish the season as best you can. And obviously Hibs being the home team, uh, we're gonna wanna exert, exert like a dominance. And you know, I, I, think, I, think, I think it'd be a very fast paced start to the game. Uh, with this weather, we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, I just think end of the season, there's not much to, to play for in the sense of places or, you know, but, you know, as a, as a Hibs player or as an ex-Hibs player and a Hibs fan, um, I'm expecting Hibs to come out and, and win. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, me too. I'm going to wrap it up there because I'm very worried yeah, we're about get us getting attacked by the by the sprinklers. So, Ponce, thank you very much no for joining problem. us. Thanks and everyone, me. thank Cheers. you very much for watching at home. Hopefully we can take three points today.